Now it's the time to dive deeper into the research topics. So please, this is the time for you, the researchers in the audience, to listen very carefully to the speakers and to think how to collaborate. Maybe you have a joint interest or a complementary expertise. Maybe joining forces can lead to a very fruitful and interesting synergy. So think about it while listening. So our first speaker in the expert panel um, is Professor Falk Harnisch from the Ofsted Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research uh, with the title of Valorization of Agricultural Waste Streams for the Production of Fuels and Chemicals by Microbial and Electrochemical Conversion. Please, Professor Harnisch. Dear Excellencies, dear uh, colleagues, I'm very happy now to be the first speaker on this uh, very excellent panel and I'm happy to represent the Helmholtz Center of Environmental Research, UFZ, and I would like to give you some examples how we want to mitigate climate change by developing new technologies in, in the realm of biotechnology, but with this very special spark here because we want also to introduce electrochemical technologies. So, and I will give you two examples here that are following one line, but uh, I want to stress here that this is just to emphasize our overall capabilities we have here. And there are many more interesting things we would like to yeah, go deeper with you after this workshop. So what is the status quo that we have and we, when we talk about biorefineries? This is, we have a strong competition of fuel and chemical production with the production of food and feed. We have a limited product portfolio, meaning that only very few products that are usually made petrochemically are nowadays produced from biomass. And this is a very special thing that I think should be addressed is we have a quite limited connection or linking between the re renewable energy sector and the sector of just bio-based production. And all this can be changed from my perspective by interlinking the renewable electric energy sector and the utilization of um, uh, biomass for production of chemicals and fuels by so-called electro biorefineries and without going too much into detail here is meaning that we use electric energy to drive biological reactions or that we can extract electric energy from bio-based compounds especially from waste and you see here um, a picture of yeah, several linkages that can be created between these two realms. And I want to give you two examples here. One is without electrochemistry, the other one is with electrochemistry. And this are, yeah, is very exemplary work that we here do at the Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research, the U of Z. And first I want to talk about new anaerobic fermentation technologies that are located here in our process line. And I think all of you know what biogas production is. This means we are breaking down complex biomass by two biological processes called hydrolysis and acetogenesis into bricks or building blocks. And these are by two subsequent processes, acetogenesis and methanogenesis, uh, uh, microbially converted into a very interesting product. And this is methane. But however, I we methane is one interesting product, but maybe not the product that you want to go for. And if we inhibit methanogenesis, then we don't have the further production of methane, of course, but we have the production of so-called medium chain carboxylic acids. So this can be things like that we all know, butyric acids so or very smelly ones, but also caproic acid, or on the other side also, um, 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 also uh, acetic acid, so it's not very much of use, but all these acids are produced by a purely microbiological process called microbial chain elongation. And here for the biochemists is the so-called bet reverse beta oxidation. So, but the interesting thing is that we can use almost all complex biomasses for generating these acids. And why this is interesting from an economic point of view, you can see here, these are some of these uh, acids, so acetic acid, butyric acid, caproic acid, caprylic acid, and some other more. And all of them have a certain value. So in here it's shown in US dollars per kilogram of biomass. And what is at the moment 
a little bit tricky and this gives us a lot of interesting research question is how to purify this respective product. So we can see the most val valuable products like caproic acid, the purification is easy, but it's not so easy to get all the biomass into this caproate. And whereas uh, the separation of something like butyrate is hard, but it's easier to get butyrate. So, and we are working here on, a very, on interesting processes, how to especially produce C6 and C8, meaning um, caproic and caprulic acid. And they are very interesting and they have a very high value also because they can potentially replace, replace palm oil and other fossil resources. They can be used as energy carriers if reduced to alcohols. And as you will see in a minute, they are also very interesting platform chemicals. And this is work that you will not only find in the UFZ, but also in a lot of other academia and even industry nowadays worldwide. Um, because this is of great interest if you have these acids, this medium chain carboxylic acids with a certain value that I gave you examples for, you can further process in very interesting products. So for the chemist, here you see some possibilities, but also for the more practical people and engineers, so it's flavoring agents, it can be fodder additive, it can be a food grain sanitizer, and it can also be in a, converted into a surfactant and so in a biofuel. So it's a true platform chemical. And here at the U of Z, we, we meaning our, my colleagues here, so not me, myself, um, have developed a process, the so-called Capraferm process. This is, was invented by the Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research U of Z but also by the DBFZ. So it's a nearby, we have the German Biomass Research Center here and we work with them on a local scale very, very closely together. And they found a process that allows them by continuous anaerobic fermentation to make these acids that I just spoke about, C6 and C8, from complex biomass with open bio, with open microbiota, meaning no need for sterilization, you just take the waste, put it in the reactor, and then you can make uh, the product without any further uh, pretreatment. And they have shown that this can be done by from, uh, from different feedstock, starting from dedicated crops, but, uh, but also agro-industrial and municipal waste, by an intelligent process control without the addition of chemicals. The methane process that could also take place at these reactors can be inhibited because it's a very intelligent process control. It can be different reactor types used. And this is very interesting from a personal perspective. It can be integrated into existing infrastructure uh, like existing biogas plants. And here you can see, for example, they've used this so-called bio-based bins that we are very popular here in Germany and use this waste that people just throw away here in a local municipality to make this interesting chemical and this can, for instance, now um, be used for make lubricants. But the acid may be not the ultimate product. And here I want to show you an opportunity where electrochemistry comes into play. And this is the second example I decided to show you now. So we have here an electrochemical upgrading. And this means we still have a renewable substrate this is converted by a bioprocess. In this example now, it's almost the same process uh, like the Capraferm process that you have seen before. So we make from complex biomass, we make organic acids, then they are separated. And finally, electrochemical upgrading to products takes place. This can be liquid or also gaseous products. And the only further energy source that we need here is renewable uh, electric energy. So we just feed electrons or electric current. So, and a little bit more detail for the people interested in, we did this on a waste product from the ethanol industry being corn beer. We converted more than half of the carbon into this MCCAs, into these acids. And finally, we then used an electrochemical reaction to gain a mixture of alkanes. And getting a mixture of alkanes may be not so, yeah, so I mean, not, may sound not so interesting, but, you have to be aware that this, this mix, mixture of alkanes is separating itself from an aqueous process solution and it's swimming on top here. And you can see this in a lab scale on the measuring cylinder and it's very, very energy dense. So, and this 
substance that you can gain there by this combined biological and electrochemical process ha can can be directly put into a car engine or an and en combustion engine in general to serve as a drop in fuel additive and over the whole process line in the up to 10 liter scale we had a carbon yield of more than 50 percent meaning more than 50 percent of the carbon that was in very complex biomass and waste finally ended up in um, in the drop drop in fuel and if you prospect the cost there very very roughly without any just uh, taxes and so on we have a cost of about one dollar 37 per liter we know that is quite already high but it's not factor 10 or so high and with these two examples i hope to have a little bit uh, risen your interest and uh, i want to have you the following take home messages we at the UFZ we are working on the future of electro biorefineries we are working, I didn't go into detail on this today, on the screening of, breed, uh, of feedstock, on the screening, utilization, engineering of microbial resources. We are working also on electrochemical uh, conversions and also electroorganic synthesis. And we are not only doing this in a small test tube, we want to bring this into a technical relevant scale. And this we do it for instance with, with partners from all over the world. And we are always interested in developing new process lines. And I think this is also something where we, and we meaning special, specifically myself, but also my colleagues, Sabine Kleinstoiber, um, who is head of the microbial, uh, uh, microbiology anaerobic systems group here in the same department as I'm working in. Yeah, I would like to engage with you and find hopefully mutual interest and maybe also lines for a joint future research agenda and I'm thanking you for your attention and have, will be happy to take your questions later on. Thank you, Professor Harnish. Um, great, great work.